Okay, hey everybody, welcome to Parks Unplugged. Uh, my name is Bill Deasy, and we're here with Paul Thompson. And uh, for those of you new to this program, we get to know some of our favorite local artists in our beautiful county park. So today we're at Deer Lakes Park. Uh, it's just a gorgeous, slightly windy day. And uh, I'm really happy to be here with Paul, one of the more talented uh, people in Pittsburgh, really. And um, Paul's going to just start us off with a song by John, John Patitucci. Hunt. That's right. Who we had at the, uh, where was he? I think he was in South. Oh, he uh, was in South. 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 Okay, sorry. South Park, yeah. uh, so here we go. Thank you. 
Nice. Man, that's so, uh, that's just so impressive. I, I don't think I've ever sat, I don't know if I've ever seen like a jazz bass solo like that, you know, for a whole song. So that's pretty, that's pretty intense. You're just so intense. You're just so talented. But I wanted to, um, like, when did, when was the first time you heard that, that song? Like, how old were you? Uh, well, that, that was probably later. That, that song pr probably came out of the late 90s. I'd okay, say, like, so. 97, 98. I'd already been playing for a while. He's just, uh, Patatucci's always been one of my heroes musically. Okay, yeah. and but you were talking to me a little before we started about, like, kind of a surprising reason that you said that you got into playing bass, which is the band... Rush. Oh, <laughs> Rush. totally. I wasn't and expecting I, that. Yeah. I do not well, apologize. I guess it makes sense in a way, right? Because like, <laughs> well, or like Rush are so... like. Yeah, it's really instrumentally focused, mm -hmm. and the, there's a virtuoso level of musicianship about their music that really I love. My best friend was a drummer uh, growing up, and it just seemed natural that I kind of followed him into music. And I, I initially, I was going to be a guitar player, but the bass had four strings as opposed to six, so I thought the bass was going to be easier. Mm -hmm. So I took up the bass. So Rush was the first thing that you played. Like, was that the was that? Well, that was the first music I really tried to play on the on the bass. That was the first that that drew me. I, I had had some musical experiences growing up. I played trumpet a little bit, a little bit of piano, a little bit of violin, but really the bass. I really wanted to play Rush music when yeah. I was younger. That's so cool. Um, so that's interesting. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But I still find it fascinating. Jazz is just such a. It seems kind of like a challenging art form in a way like as a kid like when did you first like start to lean into jazz well I never really liked it uh it, my grandfather loved it my mother loved smooth jazz those records didn't really resonate with me but as I started listening to more and more music and my best friend started to pivot he started to pivot from progressive rock so the rush drummer guy yeah he pivoted yeah okay. he pivoted to kind of Louis Belson and Buddy Rich kind Ooh, of big boy, band okay. stuff yeah and so I pivoted with him and he pivoted into jazz fusion, <laughs> which like like Chick Corea. Yeah. And he was like, check this out, this is awesome. And I, I was like, okay. And so I kind of followed him. Nice. So and how it, old were you? Tell me like how this old. This was were you? like 13, 14, mm -hmm. 15. And by by 15, definitely it was all straight ahead. Miles Davis, John Coltrane. So then you were just gone. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. How, uh, what are you going to play for us next? Uh, I'm going to do something by a really famous Pittsburgher and jazz bassist uh, named Ray Brown. Okay, this is cool. a composition he wrote with a famous television host and comedian named Steve Allen. Nice. This is a tune they wrote together called The Gravy Waltz. Cool.
That was Ray Brown. Ray Brown, Ray yes. Brown and Steve Allen. Steve Allen, yes. That's interesting. Gravy Waltz. Uh, and I meant to ask you, where did you grow up? Are you, you're from Pittsburgh? Yes, I am. I grew up mostly in the east, east end of town, East Liberty Highland Park. Okay, cool. And I was just, uh, we talked a little bit about this too before we started, but about like, I saw, what was that documentary called? That oh, we, it was called We Knew What We Had. We Knew What We Had, which is about the history of jazz, like on the hill particularly, right? Yeah. In the Hill District. Yeah, vast so history. Give us a little, if you wouldn't mind, give us like a, just a brief little history of Pittsburgh jazz. Sure. Well, Pittsburgh is a really important town in the scope of jazz, um, not just because of the really great jazz musicians we have here, but it was kind of a stop on the way to Chicago. And when musicians were kind of working their way across the country to play gigs and do tours, Pittsburgh was one of the most important stops you would make in between New York uh, and Philly and a place like Cleveland and, and, and Indianapolis. So we've had a lot of great jazz musicians come through our city, a lot of great jazz musicians that were, that were kind of cultivated in our city. George Benson is someone who comes to mind. But they all played, there was a place in the Hill District, uh, basically the Crawford Grill and other great jazz mm -hmm. clubs where there was amazing music uh, in the Hill District. It was like a little New York, little Harlem they called it really, mm -hmm. because it was so uh, diverse. The level of musicianship was high. The, the, the shops, the, uh, the, the experience of being on the Hill District, you know, almost 100 years ago was, was just like being in New York. So, so it's really incredible. And we've always had uh, great jazz musicians here. We've been really lucky to have people that could stand with anybody. I'd put anybody in Pittsburgh up against people that are in New York or L.A. G great musicians who, who could walk off of a garbage truck and, and play you off the bandstand, as we say. So. <laughs> and that's so cool, yeah. I was blown away by that documentary. Oh, I mean, it I was kinda, fun, yeah. I kind of knew it, but just to see it all laid out, just... Just, it was almost like Pittsburgh was kind of like Paris or something. Or, like, or it was just like this place that everybody had to play. Yeah, right? it was just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's a lot of, they picked some really great famous musicians, Mary Lou Williams and Ray Brown and George Benson, Ahmad Jamal. They talked about some great jazz musicians, but there's so many people that you probably never heard of that, are, yeah. that can really play. What, what are you going to do next? Uh, I'm going to do something uh, kind of timely that was written by Fats Waller almost 100 years ago. But uh, it really relates to what's going on now. Um, and it's a wonderful tune uh, that was a big hit in its day called Black and Blue. Yeah, cool, perfect.
so intense. I get so, so watching you, I'm just so focused on what you're doing. And I feel like, I almost feel like I'm playing. <laughs> it's really good. Thanks, man. Uh, uh, you're just so intense. You're like such an intense, I just get, it's yeah. such an intense instrument. And it just seems like, I don't know, such an achievement to play it so well. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, if you could just uh, sort of touch on the, touch on the major beats of your career. I'm curious about that, like of your professional career as a jazz musician. Well, I started playing in the city uh, with a lot of the really great jazz musicians that are already here. Roger Humphreys, mm -hmm. he really started hiring me when I was a teenager. There was a great, great drummer who passed away not so long ago named Joe Harris, who's a really important part of the bebop legacy. Mm -hmm. he, he, he played with a lot of great musicians. He gave me a chance when I was a teenager. Joe Negri I started playing with when I was a teenager. There's such a rich, rich jazz tradition in this town and and when you're young and you're trying to play and you can play a little bit the the older musicians were always welcoming and wonderful and I appreciated having that apprenticeship kind of relationship with them I really learned from from them from Kenny Blake from David Budway uh, from Pete Henderson from all these really really great jazz musicians in our town Maureen Budway when she was still alive she mm -hmm. showed me so much but they kind of took me in and I started playing uh, and playing a lot, you know, in my late teens, early 20s. And I started branching out, doing a lot of different other gigs. I played with Billy Price for several years. Did you ever do any touring? Not with those guys, but that's... So when I was about 23, I had a chance encounter with Maynard Ferguson's bass player. Maynard Ferguson, one of the great trumpet players ever. Mm -hmm. And his bass player said, hey, I'm leaving the band. I want to recommend you for the gig. Are you interested? And I, it wasn't my cup of tea at the time, but I asked a lot of older musicians and they said, oh, you have a chance to go on the road and leave the country and do it, do it. So I went and I joined his band for about two years and I got to go all over Europe, and the only time I've ever, ever been to Japan was with Maynard. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable, the, yeah. the kind of stuff we did. And I went literally right from his band, I jumped right to playing with Stanley Turrentine, one of the great tenor saxophonists who's also from Pittsburgh. I worked with him for almost two years until he died. He died, we played a week at the Blue Note in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, I showed up for the last night on Sunday, and there was kind of a hush in the club, and everybody said, didn't you hear what happened? And I said, what happened? Oh, he had a stroke today. His wife found him in the bathroom of the hotel. And yeah. so that was an amazing gig for me, though. Amazing. One of the great musicians, my favorite saxophone player will always be Stanley Turrentine. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I kind of came home, kind of took inventory, and I started working again around town. And the musicians, like I said, were welcoming. You're back in Pittsburgh. Hey, I got a, a gig for you next week. Yeah. Let's, let's start to work. So I started kind of setting my roots in, and that's, that's when I started teaching, which has become a equally huge part of my life. I started mm -hmm. teaching at, at Kappa, the performing arts school, uh, and a couple of universities, and, and now my, my heart is really, as much as I love to play and it's my focus, teaching is really important to me and, 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 and the journey and, and helping the music grow and live. So mm -hmm. that's how pretty much, that's my career in a... In a in, yeah. That's fascinating, Bub man. Bubble. <laughs> it's kind of cool that um, this Pittsburgh, I guess jazz in particular though, is like, I just love how it doesn't feel like it's competitive. I'm sure you might be inspired by other people or like challenged a little bit. Oh, but, totally. well that's, but, that's, a, that's the word. Yeah, but, but it seems like just more than other genres maybe in Pittsburgh. Not, Pittsburgh in general is kind of like that, but jazz in particular, it just seems like you, people take people under their wings. And, oh, totally. To yeah. Well, there's a respect. There's a lot of practice that has to go into playing jazz so much practice mm -hmm. and so much work and trial and error. And it's funny, it's almost like a, a, a fraternity that when you meet somebody who can do it, automatically you're friends with them. Automatically, yeah. oh, you're cool. You can play jazz, come on in, come, you're yeah. in the club, you That's know? That's cool, man, yeah. Well, it's been just a real pleasure to talk with you, Paul. And I, we you. appreciate your time. And you're kind of reminding me too, what we already know that Pittsburgh is just like an awesome, city totally i feel like we're all lucky to call totally. it home definitely all right thank you so much paul for being with us today thank you for watching at home and uh we're gonna wrap up this episode with a very special guest paul's wife chris is gonna take us out